All right, we're chilling. Listo. Listo, nice. cabrón. Saludita. Let's go, César. Let's go, pinche mar. Parezco pinche oso palar ahora, güey. Sí, wey. pinche friazo que está haciendo, da. I got like four layers. You got one on. I only got one on, bro. Is that legit your only one? Yeah. We well, just got out of training. Yeah, I just did get out of training. Es caliente, ahorita no. Calentón. Así. Como Ochoa. Sí. Teaching, teaching. Man. Not like Ochoa. Like we'll no. talk about. We'll talk about here. Yeah. But mm. no, that Vanessa jersey is looking good. I got my Quakes. Jacket on. Let's go. I I legit have three or four layers on right now. I know. Same like yesterday, bro. Yesterday you were late. I was prep. Estaba listo. Like, Estaba listo para el pinche Arctic. Vámonos. Yeah. No, que me va a hacer frío. That's why you gotta get, you gotta have the takes ready, right? They have to be optimized. No van a dar con frío y luego no vas a ver qué decir de los pendejos de México, right? Que bueno, todos. Que todos se vayan a la. We'll talk about that, folks. But welcome back, episode ninety nine. 99, bro. Next week is the big one. We got to move. But the, it's the big one, the big 100. Yeah, um, dude, it's crazy from when we started. Now it's 100 episodes in. For real to think, like back then, we we're just like, ah, should we just talk about the footy? And now we're 100 episodes in, 1,000 followers on IG. Let's go. Huge props to everybody, folks. If you guys uh, haven't seen on our IG, we're well past 1,000 now. Uh, but we're doing a giveaway. For one of our puro pinche gold sided scarves, go check it out. Uh, we're doing that because we're so gr uh, grateful that you guys are have stuck with us. They're helping us grow. That we've hit over a thousand followers now. That we're giving them away. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what part of the world, the U.S., anywhere you are. We'll make sure if you win, we'll get that scarf over to you for real. But shipping está cabrón. La Pero era, pues, hey, hay que hacerlo. Well, pa. We got to para la, no. pa la gente, para complacer. And yeah, right. so if you go into our Instagram, basically the more people you tag, the more entries you get. So hop yeah. on in there. Keep it going, folks. We want somebody to win. Um, but yeah, best of luck to you. And hopefully you guys get to rock the badass scarf. Everyone that we've talked to has given us amazing feedback about it, how dope it is. Authentic. Like you feel Beautiful it in your like it's. Better than the ones that the Quakes give. Hell yeah, way better, dude. Yeah, no, yeah. So hopefully you guys love it. Um, and if you guys, uh, if you guys would like to just purchase one, where we still have them for sale. If you guys would like to purchase a scarf, if you would like to support the podcast, we still have them available for local sale at first. We're still working on the website. We're working on our online store. Uh, once that gets set up, we'll be able to ship worldwide. Yep. But if you're local, hit us up because ya casi se acaba la venta. Se llamero. Um, hopefully we'll have a website soon. Uh, we just took pictures. Yeah. Then. So we look all professional <laughs> on the website. <laughs> then, hey, and the website should be like up in the horizon. It should be pretty soon. Yeah. Me. Yeah, folks. But episode 99, uh, we got a lot of stuff cooking. Super jam packed today. Actually very light on topics, but we're going to go in depth on this topic. And the topic is the Nations League final. Yeah, the Nations League final where we know Mexico got smacked two to zero versus the U.S. over the weekend. Yeah. Um, we're going to go into it, dive deep into it. What did the players say? What did the coaches say? What are our reactions? Where did they go from here? What happens at Copa America? Uh, can this team turn it around? What is U.S.'s expectation going forward? That's kind of the gist of it today. Um, and we hope you guys enjoy yeah, super excited to make sure we talk shit about Mexico mainly, but also give props where it's due in the U.S. But maybe before we get right into it, just an apology, folks, if you guys hear any ambient noise, we are outside, so hopefully the video looks amazing and aesthetic, but the audio might have some birds chirping, might have some dogs barking because <laughs> my neighborhood is uh, apparently lit now. Yeah, folks, so let's get right into it then. Like we said, uh, over the weekend, what was it sat uh, Sunday? It was Sunday, yeah. Sunday night, uh, Mexico played the U.S. Uh, in the usual what happens in uh, in any of the local cups. This is the third time in a row that the U.S. and Mexico have faced off in Nations League final. The other two, the U.S. has won. Yeah. Andily, super easy. Um, well, actually, they were tighter than this one, I would say, scoreline. Yeah. But in this one, um, the U.S. won 2-0. to zero. 
uh, goals by uh, Tyler Adams off of a banger, a screamer in the 45th, what we like to call locker room goals, right? Yep. Andas dormilon, you forget your marks, and then you smacks, and we'll go over it a little bit more. And then Gio Reyna in the 63rd kind of put Mexico in a coffin. Yeah, right? that was it. He that said bye-bye. He said bye-bye. Yeah, and then it was game management for them from there. Yeah, at that, at that point it was. Uh, maybe we could start getting a little bit more into the game, but I think after the 2-0, I don't think the U.S. was really scared for, of Mexico yeah. doing much. Uh, even though Santi, I think, came on like right after that. Uh, it's just not, there, there was no danger there, right? Um, but yeah, the first goal, Tyler Adams, if we can break it down a little bit, Tyler Adams coming back from injury and has been on a 45-minute uh, time uh, cap uh, by, set by Bournemouth. Right, okay. Bournemouth said it that he could not play more than forty-five minutes against Jamaica. He came on in the second half, and then because they went into overtime, uh, Greg Berhalter had to sub him out. Oh wow! After, after the ninetieth minute, because he could get in trouble, right? They might not let him go next time. And I mean, le resultó in this game, right? He start uh, he started. Yeah, yeah, he started in the mid, came off at the forty-six for the second half, so they they stuck to his forty-five minute cap. But what a way to go out! Like, no, I mean, that, that was a screamer. Um, at first, I didn't think he was going to shoot it, but once it left his boot, I was like, holy fuck, where did this come from? Yeah, he's not, I don't think he's the most known for hitting long balls like that and that well. But no, ya le pego seco, straight through, amazing follow through. the One of those that are curling really kind of flat or up. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, he was screaming for it. He wanted it. He knew he was all by himself. And I think meant to, like, in his mind, he already made up his mind of what he wanted to do. Yeah. As soon as we received it, he's like, I'm hitting it from here. And Yeah, even the comentaristas were, like, saying uh, before he got it, like, oh, just just a natural transition of the ball, that he was just going to get it and papita to the other side, go over here, go get it again, right? But no, dude, he had other plans. Got it wide open. Tim Ream was, like, hella high up the pitch, right? Right, because it came off of a free kick, right? So yeah. Mexico was trying to clear. They didn't clear so well. It went wide, and then it left him in the middle by himself. I think uh, Chiquito Sanchez was the one that pressed. Yeah, um, He did that slide tackle where Tyler Adams' ball, as soon as it left his foot, magged him midair, yeah. and then it just went in the top. Went over Edson's head, like right around Edson's head basically, right? Yeah. And then... Um, Maybe our, our first question that I'll ask you, a lot of people saying that Memo Chua didn't have enough time because he had like two or three players blocking his vision. But do you do you buy that or do you think he should have reached it, it like uh, he had enough time to reach it? It was a 35, 40-yard banger, right? It's really hard to tell because there are, there are those split-second moments where defenders do block you, right? And that split second can mean the ball block you blocking the ball or the ball going yeah. in like even for a split second so i give him the benefit of the doubt because i know it can be really hard and you can tell in the in the replays that you know he kind of is moving towards his left because edson is right in front of him yeah um, but at the same time ochoa got a hand to the ball he got a little wh- bit of which makes me think maybe if he was 30 or maybe if he was 28 or 27 maybe he would have got that ball right yeah. that natural instinct or that spring or that you would have had a little more spring to his his legs but at yeah. the same time you can always say like we would he have had the colmillo back then right like like is he didn't get to it this time right but you would think like oh maybe back then he wouldn't have been as as uh as footy smart as high iq to cheat on it right and like know that it's if it's going anywhere shot at him it's going to go to the other post but that's really right? that's really I don't want to say like cheap. That's almost like yeah, it's really. A, it's a sorry excuse. It's a sorry. Yeah, it's a yeah, sorry excuse because you, we we saw him at 20, 21 year olds saving La Chita Ludueña's top left. Yeah, freaking with his left hand flying right. Yep. You seen him early on in his career that he just under those three posts he was amazing, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So knowing that you're like okay maybe if he was younger this one should have been his. Yeah, I I mean. So what you're getting down to ultimately is that it should have been his. He should have gotten been there, yeah. which I, I I don't think there are very many 40-yard bangers that I wouldn't say, like, come on to the keeper. Yeah. Right? 
Like if it's that far, you should be able to cover every inch of the of the that of the post, rough. right? If it's that far, because you can puedes hacer movimientos, pues you can get two steps, right? A lot of keepers get blamed for not even taking a step. Yeah, right. They just like spring at it, and it's just like that's the line that you weave. When, at what point do we say, "Oh, just banger of a shot by itself," or "Come on, keep you got to get to those"? Because it was it was pretty centered. It wasn't al angulo, like the highest of angulos for Ochoa. Right. Yeah, it wasn't. Right. And he got so a hand that, on that's it. That's what I'm saying. Like, he got a hand on it. So maybe if he was younger, he would have saved it. But at the same time, like, maybe that split second that Edson blocked him was also the difference. Yeah. It, so it's, it's just like. Or he's got that Ramsdale uh, just, ADHD just, just not paying attention for a split oh, moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, Ochoa seems pretty uh, field IQ heavy, like yeah. very high field IQ. So. If anything, I, I wouldn't, I would say like he probably didn't see it for a split second, but it's almost like, why didn't you? You yeah. had to have, right? Yeah. And we're not getting those Ochoa games anymore. We're not no. getting those saving, saving Mexico, the super saves versus Brazil, like those type of games. And I think Mexico needs that right now and they're not getting it from him. Yeah, especially in this game, like if they would have gone into the first half, like, bro, you can regroup in that locker room and be like, yo, this is how we're going to come out second half. Yep. And it would have been a different outcome. Yeah, and that's what we say, right? Locker room goals. Yeah. Right? Uh, when I think when both of us played, we heard about of it a lot. Like, you should not be getting scored that close to the to the half. You have to do whatever you can to just stop shots from getting up. You cannot give up a goal at the last five, the last ten. Because that's just, the coach will fucking kill you in the locker room. Yeah. He will say, it's 100% because you guys were not paying attention. Yeah, it was. Um, Chiquito Sanchez should have been on that man. He should have been stuck. The whole defender should have took came too long out, to, take took too, too long, long to clear. Or maybe that's what Chua's fault as well. Like, yeah. scream Johan Vasquez's faults as a center back. Let's get up. Uh, Chiquito Sanchez being able to, or Luis Chavez also recognizing that they need to press. Everybody needs to move up. Yep. It's it's so hard because at the same time, Mexico is just so afraid of El Balón Parado. And 100%. They, they, That's they why brace. I think all of them were back, right? Edson, they, Edson, you're the six, and we know that you drop into the center backs, but we know that you're back there because Jimmy's like, my guy, you are the best header, and you're in the Premier League against the best headers in the world. Get your ass in there. Yeah. We have Cesar Montes, who's three times your height, but I, me da miedo. <laughs> Get, mark whoever he's going to mark. Mark him, right? Yeah. And that's what takes him longer to get out, right? And who, I mean, we're all talking hypotheticals and what ifs, right? But like, if he's closer up there, does Chiquito then go forward more because Edson's right next to him, right? It's a lot of what ifs, but. Yeah, it, it just it seems like, like more, like problems just keep on piling on, right? To Mexico. Yeah. That's another problem that we've known we've had for years is El Balón Parado, and it's become psychological to the point that you have to adjust mentally during the game and make decisions that you usually shouldn't, right? Yep. You should be pushing up. And yeah, and if I could take it a bit meta, like a little bit, like kind of a theme of the match, I don't think it's era un mal planteamiento de Jimmy. I think he did a good job with what he has, and we'll yeah. go way deeper into that in a while, but... I think it was um, a lot of bad luck with certain things, like that fucking banger of a shot. But I think Jimmy was uh, trying to take care of certain things and it ended up biting him the butt. Like in this case, trying to take care of El Balón Parado, guess what? It falls outside of your 18 and they smack it in anyways. Yeah. Right? Somebody who usually does it yeah, or isn't known. He's trying to stop, uh, like, in this case, Miles Robinson wasn't in, but he scored that header against to win it uh, a couple nice. of years back. Yeah. Um, it was the first one. Yeah, so he wasn't there, right? But you're still, like, they have Tim Ream. They have Chris Richards. They're very tall motherfuckers that are going to kill you, right? So then you take care of that, right? And as a coach, when you're the new coach, I think that's a big thing. You stop whatever your team is bleeding at, and then you work towards other things. If it's defensively, giving up goals. But then uh, he stops Balón Parado. No, there was no goal de Balón Parado. No header yeah. goal, right, in this game. But then what happened on that Balón Parado went out. And then, unfortunately, because everyone's back here, they score that goal. Yeah. Right? And it, it's crazy. And I think they did a good job overall of kind of neutralizing the U.S., um, how dynamic they were. 
But then they get the the amazing play by Pulisic down the line for the 2-0, right? Pulisic takes Antuna on. We were just talking about it a second ago. It takes Antuna on. Antuna is not good defensively. He gets he gets schooled. Yeah. Right? He's, that's where you see the difference in quality. Europe, yeah. Liga Mekis. And I think that's also like another point, right? Um, that you have to do all these adjustments to what Mexico lacks, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you get these quality plays because they're actually quality players, right? Mexico doesn't have that. Maybe Mexico shouldn't like need to worry about Baron Parao if they work that since they're kids. Yep. If they send them to Europe where they, they're really good at it, that you need to work on it day in, day out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, at the end of the day, I feel like for me it comes down to they have quality, a starting 11, 13, 14, 15 players, quality, mm-hmm. that Mexico doesn't. Exactly that. Yeah. And you have to put uh, players into different positions, right? Antuna having to defend Pulisic really close to his own line, right? Like that's not something that ideally Antuna. you would want him to do. And he doesn't so then, do it in Cruz Azul. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't do it overall. <laughs> so then like that's that's where you're not putting your players in the best position that they need to uh, to be able to succeed. And it's because you don't have the right tools, Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that goal, amazing play by Pulisic down the line, a couple of rebounds, Lecaya, Gio Reina, and that fool does quality. what he does. It's quality, yeah. right? Put that in front of Antuna, he puts it at the corner flag, right? Or put it in front of uh, the majority of the Mexican players. Wingers, Chucky. If Chucky gets that, he's sending it to the fucking third level of the stadium. Same with Antuna. Like, we've seen it in, at the Panama game as well. Mm-hmm. It's like, man has so many, like, it's all due respect to uh, Panama, but they're, you know, leveled down from the U.S. and maybe even Mexico that you see where Antuna had more of the ball and had space and had time to give a cross and just he would waste four or five, six different crosses that should be goals, yep. should be quality. You should be able to put him con un guante para que no la metan. But he couldn't. And that's a big thing. Your wingers, at the minimum, they just got to get balls into the box. Yeah, right? That's their job, That's right? the minimum. Right, desequilibrar. Right, that's what they bring you for. Get the ball, face your opponent, beat them down the line, get a ball into the box. Antuna used to be the number one player in all of Concacaf at doing this when he was with LA Galaxy, and nobody knew who he was. And we're like, God damn, we just found a gold gem. All right, yeah. uh, and now he's doing the running part. You just can't get it in. Neither can Chucky Lozano. No. Right. So if if two of your Two of your attacking three that are supposed to be helping you get the majority of balls into dangerous areas are just completely messing that up. It's an it's a negative player on the field. Yeah. Right? And then he doesn't help defensively. Like, what is he actually good at then? Like, why yeah. are we bringing a player that can't help you offensively, Yeah, can't put in a cross, and obviously can't help you defensively, right? Yeah. With that would go devil's advocate. When you play 4-3-3, I don't think Antuna needs to drop. The same with Quinones, right? Quinones... And Panama versus Panama was on the other side, and he does this with America. That fool, de vez en cuando un desgaste, he'll hustle down and help, but he's not defensive, right? right. He's like, ponte ya, way, and we'll get the ball, we'll give it to you. Y, y, vámonos, persínate, like, take that fool on. Right, right. And him and Henry Martin, they know each other, yeah. so they can play together, right? But that's the thing. Quinones, we all know, was suspended or was injured this game, yeah. right? He pulled his hammy or whatever the hell it was. So was. Uh, Julian Araujo, and so was, who's the third one? Johan had molestias, but Johan, he ended but up. he played. And I think those were big changes that mess with how dynamic this team can be because Araujo is the fastest outside back that Mexico has. Uh, Quinones is probably, the, in all honesty, the most informed, yeah. most uh, efficient player that Mexico has right now. That falls deadly on any play, right? Unfortunately, they have to bank a lot on him. And he's benching a fucking PSV starting player, which is kind of wild. But yeah. but in all honesty, he has the quality to do it. And it's a l- night and day because Quinones, every ball that he has is dangerous. Every ball that Antuna has, Los- Chucky Lozano has is not. Yeah. Out of bounds, corner kick, or uh, throw wins or fucking goal kicks. Yeah, and it's not the Chucky that we know, right? That we knew back in like 2018 against that Germany goal. Mm-hmm. Where he's just so fast, he can do one, two touches on the outside, and he's gone. Yeah, that's not him anymore. The U.S. have studied him and they know him. Plus, he's older now, yeah. right? 
So it's just it just sucks that we don't have that natural res- replacement. Or in, in this case, we kind of do with Julian Quinones, but we need somebody. And he gets injured and injured, but we need somebody better at the yep. end of the day. Yeah, and that's what it is. You need uh, players that you can be able to plug and play in, right? Like the U.S. has them off the bench. They had Johnny Cardoso, center starting center mid from freaking uh, from Real Betis. From Are Real you kidding Betis, me? Geez. They had Balogun this time off the bench because. Uh, what's in Haji Wright had been killing it and scored a brace the game before. Um, Yunus Musa starting center mid from Valencia. Are you kidding me? Like Malik that, Tillman, one of the most informed American players in Europe off the bench dude. in the 90th coming in. Are you kidding? Me? Yeah, Mexico doesn't have those luxuries like that. But um, and that's where it, it becomes difficult for me on um, if we go higher level on like who's to blame. I think it's a lot of things. Right now, yeah. and we've been saying this for the longest time. Federations or Liga Meki is a, the coach when it was Tata and all these things, right? Um, I don't think Jimmy has the tools that he needs to do well. Uh, he even came out and said that the U.S. has the quality that the Mexico doesn't, right? He said they have players in the best teams in Europe, Champions League players, and we don't, right? But like what? Which is wild. Which, which is wild. On Jimmy's side. Because he's, he's throwing his players under the bus, right? Throwing the players, throwing the federation, throwing the teams, the Liamekis that don't send players out. That's his goal, right? I think he's trying to hit at the teams that don't send players. Yeah. And the federa- the, the league that doesn't send the players. Uh, but you're ultimately saying, Antuna, you suck. You're near Liga um, I All of you bench players... <laughs> You guys all suck. Why aren't you guys better? Jesus Christ. But it, at the end of the day, I think that's my maybe my biggest point. The U.S. has 100% better players than Mexico right now. The U.S. probably has about uh, about like a whole starting lineup's worth of players better than Mexico has any player. Yeah. Unfortunately. Right? And, and the other, US, than the, other than the striker, in my opinion. Other than their striker position? Yeah. The striker but just position. wait for Balangan to turn it on. <laughs> Which is just a matter of time, right? Or how'd like, you write? Or how'd you write now? That full is fine, yeah. right? And, uh, but, so, overall at the moment, Mexico, uh, the U.S. is just daylights ahead of Mexico talent-wise, and they're producing even more, and it's not going to slow down. Oh. They're already above Mexico by a lot at this point. It has to be realistically looked at. They're way ahead of Mexico, and it's only going to get worse because if we're looking at U14s, U13s, 12, 10, 11, 10, whatever age you want to look at, they're already making a lot more progress than Mexico. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> I do want to play devil's advocate here and say, okay, we're going to take it back a couple generations ago. That 2006 generation who was mm-hmm. really good. De Mexico. De Mexico. Yeah. That 19- number four ranked number in the world. Number four ranked in the world. That 99 generation that that won the, Compa the Confederaciones. Confederaciones. Yep. They were playing against European squads, against Brazil, and they were winning, mm-hmm. and they were looking good. They were always why, fighting against them. Why? And they were mostly Liga Mekis players. Like yep. There was maybe a couple, one, two, maybe the Rafa Marquez or the Hugo Sanchez or whatever mm-hmm. that was playing overseas in Europe. Why can't this generation that we have now do the same? Yeah, I think it's because of the expectation in league now. The, the level of the league... The Liga Mekis. I think those players were way more hungry to make the quality that they had at Liga Mekis level better than the players now, right? The players now are getting paid in the millions of the millions of dollars to be mediocre. And the players back then were not getting paid millions and millions of dollars. They are getting paid a healthy amount. And they were battling it out every weekend to be the top team in Liga Mekis. The Necaxas, the Americas, the Chivas, the Cruz Azul, whatever, right? And uh, to, to be honest with you, I think it was just the expectation that you had as a, as a Mexican player at that time. That even if you are just in Liga Mekis, it doesn't matter. You can fight up against Germany or against Brazil. Or against, against Belgium. Against the whoever. The Netherlands, yeah. Yeah, and they don't have that right now. The, the, right now, the, the difference between an average Liga Mekis player... Uh, versus a average European player is humongous, yeah. and it, it's completely scary. Back then, I can guarantee you, like the uh, starting eleven from Liga Mekis, Le Chavanos Pinches Huevos against whoever they played against. That this team now tries to match them with quality, which is just not realistic. Yeah, yeah, and something I also want to point out is they did those famosos microciclos, mm-hmm. 
where they would take two weeks uninterrupted and they'd just go somewhere and just practice constantly yep. practice 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 which in today's world soccer world today's schedule they just don't have the logistics for that no you don't because how many tournaments there are even though there's no more cups there's no more libertadores there's no more sudamericanas there's no more copa mx but with League's Cup, with all the... Like CONCACAF Cup. All, CONCACAF Cups, all the Juegos Moleros de la Selección. Instead of those Moleros, they should just be having a couple in Mexico and then the rest of them just those microciclos. Yeah. Right? And uh, I just don't understand. Um, the Federation has its own problems where it's all money. Yeah. Right? The Those Juegos Moleros that are coming up in U.S., five or so games, that's all for money. It's not to make this team any better. Yeah, like that, those six games that you just mentioned against, like, uh, who are they playing? New Zealand. They're playing Brazil, though, no? Yeah. Yeah, they have a couple of tough teams, and then, like, New Zealand, and then, like, a couple of shitty teams. And it's like, we don't, realistically, we only need, like, the Brazils or, like, the top 10 ranked teams. All right, if we're going to play them, let's play them. Don't bring anybody else and just train. Yeah, because these are supposed to be, they're supposed to be prepped for Copa America, right? Yeah. But the scariest thing is the level that they're playing right now. It looks more like Uruguay, who's one of them that they play, is just going to wreck them. Yeah. Uruguay is just looking tough. Yeah. And then they play Brazil. It's very dangerous that they could get wrecked. But Mexico is that one. If I can if I can shed a little bit of a silver lining, Mexico plays at the level of their opponents. Yeah. Right? Mexico has been at, at maybe possibly worse times than this. And then they play against a Brazil. They play against they play against an Argentina uh, sometimes against an, they're, they're scared of Argentina honestly yeah, little bitches. they play against um they play against a England against a Germany against whoever you can Belgium whatever Belgium yeah and they they level up yeah right Mexico just beat Belgium what a couple years, right before the World Cup yeah. when we all thought it was over and Chucky scored that Chucky scored the banger of it a was goal. three three to be fair oh it's three three yeah. huh damn it was a tie no but still like. Let's go on two for two. Yeah, and then they played uh, Japan. Japan, they beat Japan yeah. uh, right before the World Cup as well. It's like, that's what I'm telling you. De vez en cuando, if if Mexico has, if they show up and dormieron bien, or I don't know what the hell it is, and they know like all eyes are on us and nobody believes in us, they'll give you a good result all of a sudden. Yeah, right. But more than not, now it's just seeming like the the lesser quality that they have is just showing. Yeah, and it's just not feasible not sustainable for them t- for any tournament yeah. uh, and it's it's scary to be honest with you um do you have a solution for mexico i, I think the solution is just doing the long term is everybody who's over 25 and they're not cemented or in europe somewhere amonos chingata madre bring in the young kids bring in the 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 kid the gutierrez kid from chicago fire Brian gutierrez, Brian gutierrez bring in the the Jordi Cortizos, or I don't know how old he is, but he's like twenty eight. <laughs> but he's baller. Yeah, but like bringing new faces, young faces who can actually be the future of Mexico, yep. just like what the U.S. did, right? They missed out on a World Cup. This last one, they brought in U twenty three. I think they were like the youngest squad in the whole tournament. Youngest squad, and they ran the most out of any team in the World Cup. And that you completely changed the DNA of the team. You have changed the faces. I, I'll piggyback off of what you said. I think the solution is there needs to come a a realistic time from Jimmy and team to really say this project that is Mexican soccer right now is completely not working. Yeah. And you don't continue with something that's not working. You fix it. And you just completely start over again. I'm sorry if it hurts a couple players' feelings like Roberto Alvarado, even though he's balling out right now, that it hurts the feelings of the likes of Antuna, that it hurts uh, Chucky Lozano, that that it hurts Henry Martin, that it hurts... Uh, the forever bench players, Luis Romo, Charlie Rodriguez, Putama, right? Get yeah. rid of those dudes and start bringing in the next generation because guess what? By the time that they f- they completely face plant at the Copa America in the next tournament, you're going to have wished that you would have brought in the Marcel Ruiz, you would have brought in Brian Gutierrez, that you would have brought in uh, all of these wonder the kids. Dupuy. Yeah, Dupuy or Marcelo Flores, now that he's killing it again, right? Like you would have wished that they would have gotten those minutes. It's like the the U.S. The U.S. knew they were the youngest, and they they weren't afraid to lose anything. They said, "All right, you kids, show us what you got, mm-hmm. because our realistic goal is going to be twenty twenty six. That's when the expectations are going to be higher, the highest, and that's when you guys are going to shine the most." 
and yeah, and that's that's what I don't see Jimmy doing. He says that it's a new change of generation because he has his uh, Olympic team, but it's a change of generation, and it's just not working. And they're also not amazingly young. They're not the most. Um, they're not the most uh, fit. They're not the the ones that run the most. They're not the the youngest encaradores, right? Like a game changer. They're just good players, but that's yeah. it. There's nothing above that, right? Like I I, I can just see a Charlie. Charlie Rodriguez, right? Very good player. Amazingly I make his player. But no te va a dar más de ahí. No. And you want the ceiling. and you want him to be to help you win the World Cup? No. Right? So then bring in the next generation that are barely starting to break through to the first team squad, Fidel Ambriz. And tell him, wait, you're the six for the future. Your dad was the six for generation. Be the six, y agarrate, and we'll send you to an amazing European team. You're gonna be balling over there. And guess what? In three years, you're going to be Andres Guardado, what he was a couple years ago. Yeah. But they need to leave. They need to force the teams to send players. Yeah. But what it's, what's, what it's going to take for that to happen is otro fracaso. Yeah. And it's crazy. It will not happen unless there's another one. Yeah. If they get completely wrecked at, if they get grouped at La Copa America, dude, it's going to be Jimmy's head and it's going to be uh, players' heads, maybe. La Bomba needs to go too because apparently he didn't do anything. I think what should, in a perfect world, what should have happened is we should have missed out on that 2014 World Cup when we were so close and Raul Jimenez Chilena saved us. If we would have missed that World Cup, all hell would have broke loose. Yep. Same thing in this last one. It's last one barely, también. If we would have missed out on it, we would have been better. Yep. Which is crazy because you you say that, but then it's like we're so close. It's like all right, we did the worst, but it's not like actually like a complete fracaso. Oh, yeah, like but we they, made it to the World Cup. But they just got grouped. <laughs> you know, pasó nada. It was the head of Tata, which we already know he wanted to leave anyways. It wasn't he an said, actual. It wasn't an actual leave. solution. Nothing actually happened. Yes, they cut off heads and not la bombas there or whatever, right? But there's no immediate solution for anything. Uh, they're banking on this imaginary idea that the that the Fuerza Básicas are going to all of a sudden start revamping. We're seeing a lot of young players in the Amekis. Yes, amazing. But like, w- at what point do we start seeing actual progress when we're seeing U23, U17s kill it for Mexico, but they're not they're not progressing up in that right? We get to a U23 level Olympic squad and they get happy that they win a gold uh, bronze medal. But they don't do any better than that. They don't go to Europe. They yeah. just stay in the Amekis, and then everyone else laps them in quality. Um, and uh, maybe maybe on that note, uh, we could talk about what some of the players have said. Okay. Uh, on that specific note about Mexico, caring more about certain things than they do about winning. Alan Pulido, uh, Sporting Kansas City player. I think he should be in the rotation for a nine, for the nine of the selection. He, was, he started killing it again after his knee injury. Um, he comes out out of nowhere uh, at the Sporting Kansas City camp and says that Mexico is more there. Se preocupan más por hacer que jugadores agarren sus cinco mundiales, sus cinco mundiales que les den todos los awards que quieran, sus cinco mundiales que llegar a un quinto partido than to do well in the World Cup, right? That's a direct hit at Ochoa. Direct. Direct hit at guardado. Uh, uh, guardado. Um, which I don't take it as much about Guardado because Guardado is very critical of the selección right now. Uh, but yeah, very direct at the old timers and saying that they'd rather have these players hit five World Cups, be historic because of that, than actually do well. Yeah. And he's hinting at a generational change, right? At what point do we get rid of Ochoa and just suffer with somebody for a little bit, but have an amazing life after that? Yeah. Right. And, uh, that's maybe another question that we have here. Everyone's asking, is it Malagón? Is he too short? Is it Tapia? He's too young, 23. Dude. Is it, is it Antonio Rodriguez? God damn, I would fucking shoot myself. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> the guy that flunked out of Chivas for Dude. having his hands like this all the time? No. Literally, no. But there isn't a clear-cut solution, but there's also no clear-cut path. There is a clear-cut solution. Who is it? Tapia. You think so? It's clear cut. It's also clear cut that kid from. Um, no, but no, don't give me options. What like it has no, to be one Tapia. and you have to go with it. And it's Tapia. Yeah, it it has to be Tapia. 
He's done it at Querétaro. He did it at the League's Cup. He's doing it at the U23s. Why not bring him and start him? Yep. The the League's Cup, all these cinco partidos que tienen, put him in. Why not Malagón? He's 25, 26. Because luego en unos cuantos años, it will be the same thing. It's Ooh. like we're just putting another Band-Aid on it. Yeah. And it's like, why not just risk it and say, Tapia, you're my guy and get ready. Yep. And we're going to prep you and we're going to... Querétaro is going to send you to a good squad in Mexico. I mean, in, in Europe. And then you're our guy. Yeah. But he doesn't have the marketing, right? He doesn't have the, the Ochoa oomph. Even though he came out of America. But like. But he flunked out of America. Yeah, quote unquote, true. Right? But, but it's the same thing. It's like, all right, so we, he's got to be marketable. See, si no. Well, that's what we're learning from, <laughs> from Televisa, right? Yeah. If you're not marketable, you're not going to make it in America. If you're not marketable, they're not going to push for you at the Selección. How can he be marketable if you don't put him in and let him shine well they america didn't and he goes to Querétaro. he's starting to do better now he's killing it he's killing it with the youth levels right but there are quality keepers in mexico and we're seeing more than breakthrough there's moreno the keeper the pachuca he's like 26 he's, he's a really good keeper as well and um there is just no i there's no project for the next keeper I don't think Jimmy is honestly taking anything into account on who it is because it's been Rangel from Chivas at the youth levels. It's been other players that never break through the Ascenso, the Liga de Ascenso, the, the Expansión. Like, there are a couple there, but Jimmy seems to be just on this hill to die with Ochoa and, like, be like, okay, yeah, you'll make it for the next World Cup too, right? Like, But what if, again, what if... Ochoa is one of those impuestos. Like, you have the federations, like, you have to play Ochoa. I mean, it sounds like it. I mean, what other explanation is there? Man's like 37. Like, put him as third keeper and have him just talk in the locker room and yeah. be like, this is what we got to do. Then put Malagón or put Tapia under his wing and, and train with them and show him what professionalism, show him what Europe is, uh, how to European. Yeah. Keeper and the, works. Yeah. And I think that is a viable solution is to have a good group of leaders because sometimes the mexican team doesn't have these leaders I, I would even throw chicharito in there i would throw in guardado in there i would throw in whoever can still play but no more than like 30 minutes right but have them in the locker room to mold these kids but they have to have the understanding you're not playing anymore ochoa we have we have to move on to something bigger and better than that uh, but then at the same time, I will judge, I will criticize the rest of the team. The quality is just not there. Field players. Yeah. Right? It's it's a mid-off everywhere. <laughs> Henry Martin, not good enough. Dude. Santi Jimenez, the level that he's playing at, I know he's not getting the minutes. I fucking hate that he's not getting the minutes. He's coming all the way from Feyenoord to get 15 minutes in one game, 20 minutes in one game. That's bullshit. 20 minutes in two games. Yeah, yeah. He didn't play in one of them. Um, but Henry Martin, mid. Santi, the level that you're playing at, mid. But you need more minutes. Yeah. Chucky, horribly mid. Atuna, horribly mid. Um, Chiquito Sanchez, sometimes se hace chiquito. Yeah. Just doesn't show up. This game se hizo chiquito. Yeah. This was too much for him. Luis Chavez holding up. Edson holding up. Johan Vasquez holding up sometimes. Cesar Montes, uh, fucking no, no, mid. no. No, no, all right. Julian Araujo, I'll take all the mistakes he can make because that fool is going to ball out soon. Yes. We yeah. see it at Las Palmas. Yes. He's going to do it. And then at the other side, it's fucking... Um, fucking otro mid-off, uh, Gallardo. Gallardo or, or Arteaga. Arteaga. I mean, de, de los dos más hace uno, right? No. It's just a lot of mid, and there's nothing better right now for and Mexico. And that's the big problem. U.S., you take out their whole starting 11, and they'll have three more starting 11s that are very similar in quality. And Mexico, and that and that starts from the bottom up. Yeah. It's how do you prepare these players? We think of all of these other players that we want to bring in, but realistically, they're still all the Mexican players. Yep. And maybe that'll switch us right into the next topic. Uh, in the next player statement: Santi Jimenez came out and said, "All these players, they're Liga Mekis players." And there's a difference between a Liga Mekis player and a European player. Santi Jimenez himself said that there's a lack of professionalism in Liga Mekis in Mexico in the Mexican player. Right. And it just opens up a huge world for me because we've seen, I've heard Sergio Ponce, El, El Pocho Ponce, come out and say that 
when he went to the World Cup, there was grupitos, the Europeans and then the Liga Mekis players, and that the Europeans wouldn't hang out with the Liga Mekis players anymore, and they'd kind of be like, be like, bro, pinche balones malos que das, parece de Liga Mekis, malísimo, and all this shit. Like, that, they would get a lot of hate for being in Liga Mekis. And this is kind of that shade Santi is sending over, but at the end of the day, it's coming from a player that played Champions League that scored in champions that trains with people in champions league and also trains with mex liga mickey's players and can probably tell these guys are just not serious yeah and they haven't been serious he's been with them since he was 17 years old at youth levels and they're just not getting better and they must not be trying as hard as he thinks players can as they should and now at now you're asking for them to perform and it, there's no preparation. It's crazy. And I don't want to bring it to like a always underlining Chivas America debate or whatever. But I, I, it just feels like this Mexico squad, like the European players understand that they're there to, to work and to ser orgullosos y trabajar con Mexico. And the Liga Mekis players just come in and they're like, oh, it's a fucking ride. It's a fucking party. I'm with a selection. Oh, look, everybody wants my autograph. Everybody wants my picture. Yeah, because they're like, I'm good enough to make it. Why do I have to be any better? Yeah, and it's just like, it's just a level of toxicity that these European players are coming out and saying, yo, like, what the fuck are they doing? They, they're they literally like, it's it's kind of, it feels like classism. Like yeah. if it were Mexico, like it was Fresita saying, oh, los pobres or something. But it's it's a sporting world. It's a it's a competition and these players that have risked it all to go be better competitive they're telling us straight up to our faces they're not trying that hard in the amikis holy shit bro they're not professional no and that's where it starts the professional aspect to it and then you try harder and then you train harder and yes unfortunately they can't just become professional now and then all of a sudden by copa america now be amazing so then you have to be realistic, Jimmy. You need to completely revamp this whole thing and bring in kids that don't have that DNA and tell them, you have to save this selection. Me and you have to save this selection. Alan Bautista, 21-year-old. Like, all these, bring the whole damn Pachuca youth squad. God damn. Uh, bring uh, Yael Padilla. Fuck it, bring him too. Bring U23s, the lightning players, the game changers, and then bring maybe the veterans in the back, right? Los Solidos, the the Montes and the Vasquez. Nah. But bring in some freaking lights out I, attackers. I, I feel that Edson Alvarez is the core of this selection. Throw Edson, him in the back. Edson Alvarez needs to be that leader that everybody looks up to because he has that DNA of like, yo, I'm never going to stop fighting. Yeah, he doesn't. And he doesn't. You can see the way he, he plays on the field. You see him at West Ham every time. You saw him at Ajax. It's like he has that DNA where he's just the barrio y te va a chingar a madrazos and he's going to work harder than you because that's just who he is. For real. And throw out Ochoa. Edson más 10. Edson más 10. And you want him in the back, center back. No, I want him to be the leader yeah. of everybody. Yeah. Throw out Ochoa. Don't bring me a guardado. Throw out all these other old heads again, Max Lifers, and bring me the young kids that want to work hard and be just like him. Yeah, but it, that's what it's... We were talking about it uh, offline or on Discord. You see Argentina is bringing 17-year-olds to the senior La niña clubs. Mal. Spain is bringing 17-year-olds. And Cubarsi. Hendrik. Yeah, uh, yeah. Brazil is bringing Hendrik. And they're bringing the best of the best of the young players and just saying, hazte, hazte grandecito right here. You have your opportunity. Do you want to be a kid? Suck on this field and we'll take you out. And you'll never see the light of day again, right? But they step up, right? And if these players are not stepping up, bring the Yalpadias, bring us another youth player, Ramon Juarez from America. Dude, bring us these players that are, especially attacking, they're game changers. And stop bringing us mid players that are just not at the level right now. I don't understand. Con que cara Jimmy sees Uriel Antuna give those shitty ass balls? It doesn't say, can I just fucking never see your face again yeah. and bring Marcelo Flores. Can I never see your face again and bring whatever lights out players playing at Pachuca? Yeah. Bring a freaking... And you see it at Pachuca. Like, the way they played America, they were just so hungry for the ball. Like, there was a ball, an America defender, Caceres had on his own end line, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and the kids were still hustling even though they were winning and it's like yo what the fuck how who is this kid it's like this kid is 17 years old and just is going out there busting his ass and that's what mexico needs at the selection that pachuca dna needs to be mexican player dna and it was at the 2014 world cup with piojo it was corren cabrones and something will work right that's what it was in 2006 it was uh, quality but then i mean who's gonna who's gonna beat us hustling yeah. nobody will out hustle us and we'll have at least that and that's what the pachuca dna has that's what some other players have the u23 is the mexico just beat argentina yeah and the con que cara jimmy are like, you giving us this and those players are busting their asses off Tr they want to save mexico right these players over here no más no pueden you saw the the videos of uh chucky after the game where he goes to the fans and he's like <laughs> you know like, ah, la wey. Ah, yeah, la. oh my god yeah Ch like even chucky I don't know if I'd, I'd say cut him off, but, like, he needs m less minutes on the field. He's not that dynamic player anymore. Yeah, have him be a, a super sub, right? Yeah. Quinones has a spot. He's he's back up to Quinones. Yes, the will. Quinones is very dangerous, and yeah. he's he's the only attacking player that's dangerous, like, consistently dangerous right now. Hen Henry, I don't know, out of nepotism got started. I don't know what it was. Yeah. They need to put out the best players with Santi and see what he's got. Uh, try to do what he does in Feyenoord over here. Uh, but then on the other side, Antuna, get somebody better. Or honestly, Fidel Ambriz, put him on Edson's position because that's what he plays, right? Mm -hmm. See him and drop Edson instead of Cesar the center back. Yep. It's, uh, Edson needs to be the solution somewhere. That's going to be his natural position as, he's, as he gets older. He's going to get yeah. dropped into the center back position. Yeah. It's like a reverse Rafa Marquez. Because Rafa Marquez was center back with Barca, and he was just so good that they're like, "Please help us in the middle." <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. But no, yeah. Let's maybe look at some silver linings, Cesar. Let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dejamos todas las chingaderas de de México de de Real de la Madre. Uh, what do you have to salvage from this team? What uh, what do you see that can be worked on, or that can be something that can give us life ahead of Copa America? Um, the main thing that I want to point out is uh, Jimmy Lozano's first half, first 40-something minutes before that goal. Mm -hmm. I thought he had a game plan. Even though it didn't look like he did, he was, for the most part, blocking um, the positions he needed to block, right? He knew yeah. that the players, the other players were dynamic. They kind of sat back and just waited for them. Um, but at the end of the day, that Werner goal was... So you can tell that Jimmy wants to... To do something, but not the, the tools necessary. He's, um, he's cooking, but it, like at a snail's pace. It's, it's and it doesn't help thing. that you have everything against you, right? Yep. Yeah. He hits heads on the chopping block, and if he messes up, do you think if he gets grouped to Copa America, he'll be the one to go, or do you think yeah. they'll respect the process? No, no, he he'll be the one to go. I think you need a. I think you need to leave him. Yeah, you do need to leave him. I right? think you need to leave him, but he also needs to understand. Maybe he hasn't made more radical changes because he doesn't feel supported. Yeah. Like he's going to, if you're a coach and you're on the chopping block, you can only do the most reasonable things so that it seems like you're not fucking things up. Yeah. Right. So he cannot bring in a 21 year old in case instead of a star player. Uh, but I think he needs to feel supported. And then ultimately if he gets grouped and they leave him, be like, all right, Fuck all you motherfuckers. We have until the World Cup now, and I need to get the best players I can. Yeah. Yeah, and another silver, silver lining that I'd say is uh, Luis Chavez. Yep. I think Luis Chavez has a glove with that left foot um, that can be dangerous on set plays against that. Panama, he gave him that beautiful cross for Edson Alvarez. Um, so I think that him and the midfielder can be a really good asset, but he, again, he doesn't have help. I like Chiquito Sanchez, but at the end of the day, He's just chiquito. Yeah, he needs to step up. He's and doing not only that, it's just that he's small, and you're gonna put him against taller, stronger, faster players. Yeah, well, I th uh, he's a mirar. But I think he can do it, and I mean, he's he's done it in headers over against Suler. No, against Germany, he scored a header. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he, like trae las ganas, chiquito propicoso vibes, right? But like he needs to step up, and he needs to be consistent. 
he cannot be getting shut out against the U.S. Yeah. That's completely unacceptable, and that's how you, as a Liga Mekis lifer, you uh, guarantee that you will uh, see less minutes, and they'll put in some other random fool that sucks. Uh, but no, he needs to take hold of that spot. He needs to go to Europe. He does. He just got. He, there's rumors now that that Pachuca set his um, transfer fee at twelve million dollars. That's the same price as Tony Cruz. It's insane. That's more than Paul Pogba a couple seasons ago. Yeah, it's and it's in, it's insane that they stopped his uh, transfer to Toulouse in France and to a Feyenoord couple, a couple seasons ago, and it's it's shitty, right? It's that's a bigger problem to unwrap in in the Liga, um, but yeah, a silver lining. I do like I do like um, I do like Luis Chavez as a silver lining. Um, I I if they can give, I don't think that they'll get grouped in Copa America. So hopefully, and they're basically a home team here, right? So hopefully that's good. Um, silver lining for me, I would say to the fans with the the best eleven that Mexico has, they have a shot at things. Because they were missing a Quinones, they were missing an Araujo, they had an injured back line, uh, they were a bit struggling. Maybe we switch out Ochoa and we really start revamping this team. I can see that this team isn't as bad as a 2 0 May paint it versus the US and a third straight loss to the US in a, in a final match. Damn. Not as bad, but that's not saying much. Yeah. That's, it's that's not really say, hard. It, to it's uh, not saying, oh, yeah, we'll make it a semis in the Copa I mean, No. No. No, I think it's going to be uh, really. It's going to be a tough group, but I don't know if they'll make it past the next stage, right? They'll make it out of the group. And by 2026, Jimmy's got to start cooking with those 23-year-olds yeah. that beat Argentina. He has to cook with those. He has to cook with the U21s that we're seeing breakthrough in Liga Mekis. He has to make sure that about four to five to six of those are there. Yeah. There is no way that Fidel Ambris in three years is not going to be at the World Cup. He has to be there. Um, there's no way that Ayael Padilla... I understand that he's, what, 18, 19, 17, what's yeah, 18. 18, 17, 18. But in three years, that's 21. That's a grown-ass man. That's five years older than La Mal. Yeah. You can do it. And if you support them, they'll, they'll get it done. Um, let's, uh, let's break it down for expectations for the Copa America. Expectations for the Copa America. Do you think the U.S. gets put as a, uh, as a favorite to win it with this? No. No, I think... They're a favorite to be top four of the tournament. Semifinals. Yeah. Um, I think Colombia is doing really well. I think Brazil and Argentina, you can't cut, count them out. But I think they're in the top four. Maybe Uruguay. Top five with Uruguay. Um, Ecuador is also a sleeper, but they tend to kind of get shy. Um, the big stage. But I think Colombia for sure has to be in the final. Uh, with one of Brazil or Argentina. In the final. Damn, that's a hot take right there. Yeah. I think uh, just Mexico. How far can they make it? Um, they If they don't make it out of the group stage, it's a completo fracaso. Um, but I don't think they'll get past the next it, round. Quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, I think that'll be too much to ask because then you'll get into the Ecuador. Or yeah. They, I'll piggyback off of that. I uh, So the U.S., I do. I see them making, maybe squeezing their way into top four as well if they can play as good as they did at the World Cup. Running wise, they're very dynamic and fast. They can figure out that nine position. I think they can make it work. If Lucky can break top eight, um, there's four groups, right? Yeah, they sell in ocho. Yeah, so I they they have to move on out of groups. So I think from there, I think it's very difficult for them to move on. Their best chance is getting first in the group and playing a second in the group from a different group. If they make it second in the group, the panzazo, I don't think they'll make it out alive because they will get a Brazil. They will get an Argentina. They'll get an Uruguay, and they'll they'll do what they always do to Mexico. Yep, pretty easy. I feel like pretty easy. Por decir, no. Just to touch on the U.S. a little bit, Joe Reyna and got player of the tournament. Man's on fire. Man's talented. Man's is talented. Like, um, he doesn't yeah. do this at club. No, doesn't and, even get minutes at club. And that's another thing. Like you don't do it at club, but then you get this international break, and it's like your time to shine. You go back into Nottingham Forest and be like, yo, like, I feel good, man. I got best player of the tournament. I scored a goal. I helped my team. I was out there balling out. Let's get ready. Let's We're let's fighting get relegation here. What are we doing? Like, You have the best player of a federation, of a whole confederation right here in me. Why am I not in? Yeah. And we're fighting relegation. 
Yeah, and it's like a mental boost. It's like, yo, like I'm going to keep working harder. I'm only here on loan. Yep. Yeah, and it's scary, right? He's a very big piece of that U.S. men's national team attack. And when yeah. he's on, they're on. Yeah. Uh, Damon um, Pulisic, amazing. Um, I think that whole team, at the back line, I feel like they weren't tested as much just because of how shitty Mexico was. Yep. But I feel like they're a really solid team. Yeah, I feel it. All right, we get club soccer back. Games to watch. Let's go. Premier League back um, after an international break. We got Liverpool against Brighton. A uh, really important match for Liverpool to keep pace with the top of the league. We got the game that everyone's waiting for. Arsenal versus Manchester City for the top of the Premier League. That's going to be a great one to watch. In La Liga, we got Real Madrid against Athletic Club. Uh, we'll see if Real Madrid can keep opening up the gap against Barcelona up at the top of the league. We got Bayern Munich versus Dortmund. Bayern Munich's trying to keep pace with Leverkusen. We'll see if we can do that against the other Champions League German squad. In Liga Mekis, we got America against Atletico San Luis. Um, We'll see if America can get the three points or if San Luis is going to make a late push for playoffs. Uh, Another one in Liga Mekis, we got Chivas versus Monterrey. We got five games left in Liga Mekis. Chivas needs to add up points and quickly. Can they get a dub versus first place to try to make it to the top four? Lit. All right, folks. Well, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Bring us on home, Cesar. Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, make sure you hit. Make sure you go to Instagram and check out our giveaway. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got the scarf giveaway going. Make sure you tag folks in there and let them know to to come through and check us out. Hell yeah, folks! Keep sharing us. We've been growing a lot lately. Share us with a friend that loves footy, um, and uh, y'all will continue growing, giving you guys great content. Remember to. Uh, reach out to us and tell us what you guys want to hear. All right, folks. Uh, thank you guys so much. Peace. We'll talk later. Peace.